Hello guys, today we have an interesting upgrade of a Vespa type electric scooter. This particular scooter is equipped with a sine wave controller at 45 amps 60 volts, two batteries of 60 volts 20 amps and a hub motor by QS company at 2000 watts rated power. The upgrade will be done mainly on the controller. We will replace the factory controller which is too small with a top speed at 45 to 50 km with a maximum output of 2.7 kW. As you understand, for a QS motor with a normal power of 2000 watts it is very low. This particular motor can easily reach from 5000 to 6000 watts at the start. So, after my suggestion to get a second battery, I give the green light to replace the controller with a part driver NT72-260, which is at 80 amps 72 volts. So, we are going for almost twice the power. And most importantly, we have a flux weakening option which is allows us to give extra turns to the motor to have a higher top speed, which was also the customer's request. The third step as always before doing anything, we must disconnect the vehicle battery. Here I am disconnecting the connector of hole sensors. And then we carefully remove the battery and face wires of the motor from the controller. Here I disconnect the main plug of the controller. All the scooter signals pass through this particular plug. And now it is time to install the new controller, which is the Far Driver ND72-60. And here is our main connector wires of the controller. Regarding the main connector wires, you don't need to worry, because we will connect only a few of them. Luckily for us, the whole sensor connector of the controller and the motor are exactly the same kind of waterproof plug, so we do not need to do any soldering there. All we need to do here is to check the polarity of 5 volt supply, black to black and red to the red.
the first four pin connector that we see and the only one with the red label is for the Bluetooth module. The next two wire plug with black and yellow green wires is for the low E brake signal. The next pair of wires, ground black and brown white is for the reverse signal. The next plug and the most common in the colors which is black ground, red white and green white is for the twist throttle. The next blue plug with ground black, blue white and yellow white signals is for the 3 speed selection. The next and the last one is the single orange key switch wire, which is the high voltage ignition signal to the controller. Now it is time to find the scooter control wiring that ends at the main plug so we can connect them to the controller. Let's start from the twist throttle. Pulling the cable we see that it ends in two plugs. One has three wires, red, green and black which is the throttle and the other plug is with blue and yellow wires which is the switch for high and low speed option. On the other side which is the main line of the scooter the throttle came out with the same colors, while the switch came out in blue and black. To confirm the switch cable, we will check the continuity between the signal which is blue and the general ground wire which is black. In case you are wondering why I am measuring the signal with a negative main battery connector on the controller, it is because all black ground wires are connected at the same point. Once we confirm our wiring, we carefully cut and connect them to our controller signal wires with the correct coloration. Note that from the signal pair wires that are not necessary to connect the black ground wire, because they are already connected directly to the general main negative cable. The colors of the throttle of the main scooter wires are exactly the same as the color wires of the controller. So here we connect them as they are, color to color. And the blue speed wire from the switch to the yellow controller wire which is the fast speed. It is time to connect the ignition key wire which is the orange one from the controller side. So now from the scooter main plug we must to find the key switch. From my personal experience ignition wires are usually a little thicker than the rest and the only thick wire I see in the general plug is the yellow wire. After a quick continuity check we confirm that the key switch is the yellow wire that ends at the positive terminal of the battery. Next step is to find the wires of the reverse switch. 
which end in the black and yellow wires of the main plug. From the controller side, the reverse mode signal is brown with white line. Next and last signal we will need is the brake signal. As you can see on braking signal wires, for some reason I don't have the black ground wire. We see a pink and yellow with green line wire. As we know, scooters usually use 12 volts for the brake signal to activate the stop lamp. And because we have 12 volts in the signal, instead of connecting it to the low brake of the controller, we should connect it to the high brake signal because 12 volts is high voltage input. Otherwise, we will damage our controller. So we connect the yellow green 12 volt output of the brake to the gray controller cable, which is the high brake. At the end of the wiring, I will connect my adjustable power supply to the controller with limited output current at 500 milliamps to check and prevent for short circuits to avoid damage of the battery and electronic parts. As you can see on the screen, after key ignition, the consumption on standby mode is about 300 milliamps, which is within reasonable limits. Now we know that we can connect the vehicle's battery and perform the test without fear. After the check, everything works normally and smoothly. Now we just have to assemble the scooter, put it on the road and do some programming changes on the region braking, maximum output currents and flux weakening adjustments to have a maximum speed around 80 km.
that's it for today guys and see you in the next video